For this video, we're taking a break from what I normally post on this channel for some things that need to be said. As someone who's tutored over 100 students in various levels of math and physics, and worked as a teacher's assistant in college where I graded tests and homework from engineering, math, and physics majors, I realized everyone is making the same simple mistakes. It's become so repetitive that I want to put it in one video. Whether you're an Algebra 2 or Calculus going to take a standardized test and so on, these are several of the things that are losing you easy points. For those who are better at math, you probably won't be learning anything new or any cool tips in this video, but for the rest of you, it's time to stop! So here we go. First up is this. If you think that this equals this, or this becomes this, then pay attention because this tells your teacher, hey, I'm bad at math and I can prove it. When you square something, you multiply that by itself. When you multiply something like this, you have to FOIL, as I'm sure most of you have heard it called. Everything in the first set of parentheses must be multiplied to everything in the second set. So when you see something complicated to the second power, write it out twice before doing anything. And the same applies to any other integer power as well. If inside the parentheses is just things multiplied and that's all to the second, that's technically when you can multiply the 2 to all the exponents on the inside. But that only happens because, again, you technically have to write the same thing twice, and when you multiply variables of the same base, you add the exponents, which is the same as multiplying by 2 in this case. Now the same thing applies to square roots. If you want to take the square root of x squared plus y squared, it is not x plus y. Or the square root of x squared plus 25 is not x plus 5. In fact, you really can't simplify these at all. When you have just multiplication in the square root, again, technically you can half all the exponents. Otherwise, be very careful when you're simplifying these. The next topic is a quick one, and that's absolute values. These start off very easy for everyone. The absolute value of 5 is 5, and the absolute value of negative 7 is 7. Now, only do this for numbers, and numbers that are alone in the absolute value. Students will learn this, and then think they can change just any negative sign in an absolute value. The classic example is students changing this to this, because the absolute value changes the negative sign, right? Yeah, that is completely wrong. You can only apply that sign change to numbers that are alone. This is fine, this is fine, this is not. Even if you are given the absolute value of negative x, that does not equal x. The best you could do is this. There are rules for solving these more complicated equations, which I'm not going to cover, but at least don't go changing every negative sign inside an absolute value. Do it for lone numbers only. Next up is problems like this. When students see fractions with variables, they will just cross out literally anything that looks the same on the top and bottom. I know many people watching this will say you can cancel the 4s and or you can cancel the x's. And yeah, both of those are again completely wrong. And here's how you are not going to make that mistake again. If you get a problem like this and want to cancel the 4s, to check if that is correct, you just need to do a quick scan. You're going to look in both the numerator and the denominator. If you find just one addition or subtraction sign that is not inside parentheses, do not cancel anything. This is not a perfect method, but it will work for a lot of problems. For our question here, we see there is an addition sign up here. It's not in parentheses, therefore we cannot cancel anything. This is pretty much as simplified as it gets. In this problem here, you may want to cancel these x's, but before you try, do a quick search, and since you'll find there is a subtraction sign not inside parentheses, we cannot cancel anything. If you're given this, you are now allowed to cancel out the x's, because we check, and yes, there are addition signs, but they are inside parentheses, so it's okay. The second you add a plus one either to the top or the bottom, you now cannot cancel anything, as there's an addition sign outside parentheses. This is not a perfect method, because like in our last example, just because of what I said, that doesn't mean you can cancel the y's, let's say. That is still wrong, but the reason is really because it's inside parentheses itself, which has an addition sign. Yes, there are other examples I could show where this method won't help, but in most cases, for those who really struggle with math especially, this will work. Now let's talk about these. These right here just stop people in their tracks when they're doing homework or taking a test or whatever. Fractions are just something so many students never get the hang of. Throw in fractions within fractions, and people just give up. So if these freak you out, here's what you're going to do. You go back to elementary school fractions. Hopefully you remember how to divide fractions when they're written like this. You may have even learned the phrase keep it, change it, flip it. 
For those who need a refresher, you leave the first fraction alone. You change the division sign to multiplication, and then you flip the second fraction. Multiplication of fractions is everyone's favorite and is the easiest because all you do is multiply straight across. So now if you have an expression written in a less friendly way, all you do is take the big or main division line and write it as a regular division sign. Then you just put the numerator on the left and the denominator on the right. You're just doing two thirds divided by four sevenths like you're back in elementary school. Then you can solve it just like before. And if you can handle that, then you will be fine. If you have two over four ninths, you just write it as well the same thing. Just listen to how I said it, two divided by four ninths. Then remember, you can always write an integer as the number over one, then you do the same thing. If you have five six divided by three, don't even think about trying to cancel anything out like the three and the six. Just write out five six divided by three, which we know is just three over one. Keep it, change it, flip it, and then multiply straight across. As you see, nothing even canceled. And until you're really comfortable with these, just write it out like I showed. Okay, of everything I go over in this video, this next part will probably lose you the most points on any test or assignment, and I see it everywhere. When given a problem like this, many students just don't know what to do, even though your teachers should spend a good amount of time on it. Again, you're just gonna do some looking, but this time for an x squared and an x. If you find both the x squared and the x, you're done looking. If you find those, you automatically subtract everything to one side and get zero on the other. There's almost no exception to this, especially in high school. I see people given this and they try to move the five to the other side, maybe take the square root and it just gets bad. The second you try putting terms on different sides, your answer is just gonna get more and more wrong. You see an x squared and an x, you have to have zero on the other side. This is a quadratic and from there you typically have two options. Factor using some x or box method you may have learned. And if that doesn't work, you have the quadratic formula. You can complete the square, but unless specifically asked, I really don't see anyone ever do this. So to put this to the test, if you have something like this, what are you gonna do? You definitely do not divide by x and automatically lose half your points. Instead, you see there's an x squared and an x, and you move everything to one side. And in this case, you can factor out an x and solve from there. Students lose more points on questions like this compared to other quadratic questions when it's actually easier. If you see the same variable in every term, then take it out. Yeah, technically you could use either of the other methods, but this is way faster. And last is just a real quick heads up. A lot of you are getting your basic arithmetic wrong even when given a calculator. When you have to calculate some fraction that is multiplication in the denominator, put parentheses around that in your calculator. It's crazy how many people will see this and type into their calculator six divided by five pi. That might look right, but it's wrong. Your calculator only knows PEMDAS and it will assume you're doing six divided by five times pi. Same goes for exponents. If you have y equals x squared and have to plug in negative 17, for those who do it on the calculator, if you type negative 17 to the second, you will get a negative number. Again, your calculator is thinking to do exponents first and then multiply the negative one since multiplication comes after exponents. So overall, for any exponent or division that has anything but a single number on the bottom, use parentheses. For some of these tips, I almost don't like teaching them. I feel students get so lost in all the quote math rules that they forget what they're really doing. If you're asked to solve 12 over x equals six, some people may struggle, others may put the six over one and cross multiply, Others may multiply both sides by x, and both of those are right. But don't forget this is just asking 12 divided by what number is six? And anyone should be able to say it's just two. It's as simple as that. Or when you're asked to solve this, some people will accidentally say the answers are positive three and positive five, which is a common mistake and is usually met with, oh yeah, I forgot you're supposed to flip the sign. This is true, but again, you're focused too much on these rules and forget what you're even doing. It doesn't take long to see that if you plug in that three that you thought x was, you don't get zero. If you plug in negative three, you obviously do because zero times anything is zero. I know this only applies to basic solve for x problems, but it's just something to keep in mind. Before I end this video, yes, anyone could come up with some examples where the things I talked about either would not work or are not the best strategy, but this was directed at those who really struggle with some of these topics and just need those foundations. 
These are just some of the things I see so much of that I had to make a video on, but maybe I'll make a part two because there are more, of course. But with that said, I'm going to end that video here. If you enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and join the Major Prep Facebook group for updates on everything. And I'll see you all in the next video.